Prostate cancer is a carcinoma of the prostate gland which has a risk of spreading to other areas of the body like the lymph nodes and bone. Prostate cancer is the most common non-skin related cancer in men worldwide with an estimated 1.6 million cases and 366,000 deaths annually. The prostate gland is a walnut sized gland of the male reproductive system and it surrounds the urethra just below the bladder. It's about 3 centimeters in size and weighs about 20 grams. The functions of the prostate gland is to secrete fluid that nourishes and protects sperm. During the process of ejaculation, the prostate squeezes this fluid into the urethra and it's expelled with sperm as semen. Prostate cancer may be without any symptoms, especially in the initial stages. However, during later stages, symptoms may include pain, difficulty urinating, blood in the urine, or radiating pain in the pelvis or back. Fatigue is also another symptom. The symptoms of prostate cancer are similar to benign prostate hyperplasia, which I will be making a separate video on. Prostate cancer is considered to be an adenocarcinoma, which means it's a cancer of a gland. The semen secreting gland cells of the prostate mutate into cancer cells. Commonly the cancer cells form in the peripheral zone of the prostate. These small clumps of cancer cells start off by remaining in the prostate gland, which is a condition known as carcinoma in situ, or prostatic intraepithelial neoplasm. Over time, these cells multiply and spread to the surrounding prostate tissue and form a tumour. The cause of prostate cancer can be due to the loss of certain cancer suppressor genes, like in chromosomes 8P, 10Q, 13Q and 16Q. There are other tumour suppressor genes such as PTEN, which are considered to be important as it's noted that men with a confirmed initial diagnosis of prostate cancer have lost at least one copy of the PTEN gene. P53 mutations are seen in the later stages of prostate cancer and alterations in the AKT signaling pathway have also been known to contribute towards the development of prostate cancer. The risk factors of prostate cancer include age, so being over 50 years old, race, prostate cancer is more common in African men where the rate is 1 in 4, whereas with other men the rate is 1 in 8. Other contributing factors include high androgen hormone levels, a genetic predisposition to prostate cancer, so if your father or brother have also had it, a diet high in animal fat and a diet low in vegetables. Obesity and excessive alcohol intake is also linked. Traditionally, prostate cancers were graded according to the Gleason score, which outlines the change from normal cells to tumor cells. The cells are graded from one to five. Grade one indicates normal prostate tissue, whereas cells at grade 5 are considered high grade and have mutated to the extent they don't resemble normal cells. The pathologist that looks at your sample will give two scores based on the pattern they see, the first being what they think it is and the second being the next possible pattern. For example, a tissue sample is observed and the pathologist diagnoses it as grade 3 and 4 and this will give a Gleason score of 7. Other tumour staging classifications include the TNM classification, T being presence of tumour, N means nodes to assess if lymph nodes are affected, and M is for metastasis, which identifies if there is any spread of the cancer around the body. The diagnosis of prostate cancer includes digital rectal examination, where a doctor inserts a finger into the rectum to detect any prostate abnormalities. Imaging studies such as MRIs and ultrasound are useful tools to detect prostate cancer. If cancer is suspected, a biopsy is usually done where tissue sample from the prostate is taken and assessed under a microscope. Prostate cancer can also be screened with a blood test with elevated prostate-specific antigen, abbreviated as PSA, and if it's elevated, this indicates abnormality of the prostate. Normal ranges of PSA are between 1 and 1.5 nanograms per milliliter. Usually a combination of the above diagnostic methods leads to an official diagnosis of prostate cancer. Treatment of prostate cancers includes surveillance. This is where the tumour is carefully observed over time, with the aim to begin treatment if there is any signs of progression. This monitoring may include routine PSA tests, digital rectal examination, or repeated biopsies at set intervals. As prostate cancers can be slow growing, this is a suitable treatment option but it's not considered for more aggressive forms of prostate cancer. Other treatment options include radical prostatectomy where seminal vesicles, the prostate and the ampullae of the vas deferens are removed.
Radiation therapy to target the abnormal cells is also a treatment option. External beam radiotherapy is one option where radiation is directed towards the whole pelvis externally with the aim to inhibit cancer cell growth and eliminate cancer cells. Another form of radiotherapy is brachytherapy, where tiny radioactive seeds are placed in the body close to the tumour. Cryosurgery is a treatment that uses extreme cold produced by liquid nitrogen or argon gas to destroy cancer cells and abnormal tissue. Hormone therapy is also considered to reduce androgen levels and to prevent them reaching prostate cancer cells to reduce growth. Luteinizing hormone blockers, which stops the pituitary gland making luteinizing hormone, therefore testicles don't receive the message to produce testosterone. Elevated androgen levels promote prostate cancer cell growth. Examples of luteinizing hormone blockers are luprorelin and bucirelin. Anti-androgens are a type of medication that stops androgens from working by binding onto the receptors and stopping the binding of testosterone. The aim is to reduce prostate cancer cell growth, and examples of anti-androgens include, include flutamide and bicolutamide. When anti-androgens and luteinizing hormone blockers are combined as first-line therapy for prostate cancer, this is called a combined androgen blockade. The life expectancy with the diagnosis of prostate cancer is hard to predict as there are a lot of medical and lifestyle factors which may cause the number to vary. When calculating the potential number of years a patient will lose due to prostate cancer, if they have a BMI above 30 and combined with a lifestyle of bad habits such as smoking, there is a risk of losing up to 13 years if these are considered. It is said that an overall healthy man with a low-grade Gleason score, that being 2 to 4, are unlikely to die of prostate cancer within 15 years of diagnosis. Older males aged roughly 70 to 75 with low-grade prostate cancer have roughly have a 20% survival rate at 15 years because of other competing factors and other likely medical conditions. Men who have a higher Gleason score between 8 to 10 experience a mortality risk within 15 years of the diagnosis, irrespective of their age.